Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for episode 23 of Bumbling Through Birthright. If you're new here, make sure you check out the playlist for the entire series. And if you just missed the last episode, make sure you check out the link down below. If you remember, at the end of the last session, we had gone to Freemensky, we came across a dungeon, and it kind of beat the crap out of us. Well, strap in and get ready for part two of trying to take out this dungeon. So like I mentioned in the last session, and briefly there, the dungeon that we came across in Freemensky kind of sucked. Well last time we had five player characters, this time we're down to three. So not only are we going into a dungeon that's going to be terrible, there's also now only three of us to deal with it. The three player characters that we have for this session are Roz, Brindis, and Val. So it's a girl party, gonna just go kill some things. Yay, girl power! But before we get back to the dungeon, we definitely had to take a long rest because, as mentioned before, dungeon sucked. So Brindis continues on with her gun proficiency training. She's working on making it so she's proficient with her musket because she crits pretty often with it, but it'd be much more convenient if she could add a few more things to it. Val goes and bounty hunts because that's her favorite thing to do, other than maybe pit fighting, but it's, it's, it's a toss up I would say. And then Roz, knowing what was happening in that dungeon, takes some time to scribe some magic missile scrolls because if there's only three of us, there's a good chance that Roz is going to be using a lot of magic. Good idea to have some extra spells kicking around. So once we get into the dungeon, instead of going to the right and going on a new path, we decide to go to the left, which was the way we went before and fought the ooze. And instead of going to the door where we fought the elementals, we go the other way. And it's just like a long corridor. There's some doors here and there, but we don't really want to open any of them because it's scary. <laughs> So after, you know, sussing out where everything is, we're like, let's go back into the room where we fought the elementals because I seem to recall there being a door in there and maybe that will hook up with some of these doors. So we go back in there and there is another door, but we can't get it open. All right, fair enough. So we try to figure out with our mental map what door that we saw down the hallway could likely go into this room. And so we go to that door. Check to see if it's trapped. It's one of those situations where it could be trapped, you know it could be trapped, but you roll really terribly and so you just have to assume that it's not trapped. Well, it was trapped, Val opens it, gets shot with an arrow, which I think was like a crit or something, and so she gets hurt real bad really fast. And then Brindis proceeds to push the door a little bit more open, and we see these three bear-like creatures. Not just bear-like creatures, they are bears, they are cave bears. And there's three of them, which means one for each of us. Yay! It's not, it's not fun. It's, it's a rough battle, but Brindis casts Magical Darkness, which helps make it so the bears can't see her to hit her, and she's also kind of in front of the other two, so she can protect them, which is super convenient. Managed to take them down. There's some caramel, which is basically dwarven, carved into the wall. It says Banian died here. Who's that? I don't know, but looking at this, I should maybe do some research into that in-game. Like, Roz... Roz likes to know things. Roz, Roz keeps notes, which is why I keep notes. There's also a fountain under the caramel, but it doesn't do anything fancy. We tried. We, we, we checked it so many times, the DM was like, just keep moving. So we continue down the hallway and we find a portcullis and inside that room there is a troll and three ogres. We're still a little bit hurt at this point. Like I said, Val took quite a bit of damage and so we're gonna try to be smart about this. So Val puts down two hunting traps right in the doorway and we're just gonna start shooting at the trolls and ogres through the portcullis because you know, that seems like the safe way to go. Val also puts down spike growth, so like lots of battlefield control. This is going to give us the best chance of fighting this battle and not dying, because like I said, there's only three of us and now there's four of them, which seems very unfair. So they start to come towards us. It takes them a little bit to get the portcullis up. We're shooting the troll, but the troll is regenerating because that's a thing trolls do. Fortunately, Roz has the spell Chill Touch and that prevents things from regaining hit points in between Roz's turns. So that's a very convenient cantrip to have. Two of the ogres get stuck in the hunting traps, super awesome. And then finally, we're able to throw some fireballs with Roz into the mix and kill them up 
real good. And hey, there's a treasure chest in that room. So once they're all dead, we've taken them out, we go in, treasure chest. I think at this point, Roz was maybe the least damaged and Roz was like, don't worry, I got this, I'll open the treasure chest. It wasn't treasure chest. It was a mimic. And somehow, despite being like the least dexterous character that we have, Roz manages to get away from the mimic and we killed it. So I was really hoping for a treasure chest, but at least not dying is a good consolation prize. Guess what? We're all almost dead again. <laughs> and so we head back out of the dungeon, back to Freemansky for another long rest. Like this is this is rough. Like the nice thing is, is this dungeon has been here forever. It ain't going anywhere. If we don't open doors, it seems like there's not a problem other than the fact that it's leeching the earth. They can wait a couple days. We need to not die. So for this long rest, Roz takes the opportunity to make potions because as you can tell, we've been getting a little bit hurt and using uh, her inventory a bit. Brindis casts Ledger Domain on Val. So that's a right spell, which enables Val to just shrug off damage from one hit. So if she's down to one hit point and she gets hit, she can be like, nope, didn't hit me. Or, you know, if it's a crit, she can be like, nope, didn't hit me. And it's super convenient and it lasts until it's cast the next time or until it gets used. Val goes looking for a magical item and she comes across a ring of protection, which gives a plus one to AC and a plus one to saves. And normally it's super expensive and it's a family heirloom, but they're like, you know what? You're trying to save this land. We'll give it to you for a little bit cheaper. So 6,000 GP instead of 24,000 GP. So after this week of long rest, it's back into the dungeon. This time, instead of going to the left, because we're pretty sure we've cleared everything out that way, we go down this big long hallway to the right. At the very end, there's a door, we unlock it, and we go into this room and there's like a weird altar and like writing and all that strange stuff. And three weird eldritch creatures. They've got like three arms and like mouths on the top of their heads. They're called Zorns. They're they're weird, but it's really funny because all of the players had a different vision of what it looked like. And so when the DM was like, here's a picture, we're like, no, no, that's not what it looks like. So Roz decides to do a history check on these. Like, does Roz know what's going on with these? And Roz has read about these before and gets a very weird and obscure piece of knowledge, which is a hungry Zorn is a helpful Zorn. And she knows that Zorn eat gems. And fortunately, Roz has been carrying around gems for a while, so literally this entire battle, Brindis and Val are trying to kill these two other Zorn, and Roz is just like, here's a gem. And on the Zorn's turn, the Zorn is like, thank you for the gem. On and off. Like, <laughs> it was getting to the point where it's like, I'm running out of gems. But also, I felt bad because I couldn't really help in the battle, but all I could do on my turn was pull out a gem. So, you know, it worked, and... It was rough and it was close, just like everything else in this dungeon, but we managed to kill them. So once we've taken care of the Zorn, we go into the room because most of the battle took place in the hallway because they could morph through walls, which was super inconvenient for us. And we go in and the altar, it's an evil altar. Roz does some arcana checks on it like, if I destroy this, is it going to kill me kind of thing. And she was able to tell that as long as you don't have a certain bloodline, I can't Azrai, I want to say Azrai, which is the one that Rainier has. As long as you don't have that bloodline, you're good. You can destroy it without consequences. And it's very clear that this evil altar is the thing that's sapping the land. So Roz destroys it and whoa, blood points. Who would have thought? So it's super convenient. Roz got two blood points from that. And also everybody got some Regency points. So awesome. And there was a bunch of treasure. Treasure is always good too. And it's kind of nice too because doing this dungeon predominantly with three people, we got so much experience. So once we finish in the dungeon, we come out and Brand is there to greet us and it's already very apparent that we have done something good. He's super stoked that we're there and we're like, cool, cool, cool. We need to take a long rest. <laughs> it's like three long rests in one session and only dealing with one thing. Like, it was crazy, this dungeon, crazy. So Brindis does more gun proficiency training. I'm not sure what week she's on here. I'd guess like six or seven. Val goes out bounty hunting again. And Roz takes the week to cast a different right spell, which transports us back to Hauling Holman because you know, it's been a while since we've been home. We end up, we're, we're trying to figure out where to transport because if you transport somewhere and there's people there, you might not be able to transport there or everybody gets super hurt. So we're like, let's just transport into Brindis's room. Nobody should be in Brindis's room. And we get there and King Ruthgar's there like half naked and he's like, what are you all doing here? So we leave, but before we leave, he's like, 
Also, Brindis, my queen, why did you give some land to the Orogs? And so she's got to explain that she's like trying to have peace and not trying to have war, but also low-key trying to have war. Because if they militarize that zone, it's 100% war. So we want war with the Orogs, but we don't want war with the Orogs, but we do want war with the Orogs. But yeah, so then we leave them to do their canoodling. <laughs> so after that, it turns out that we've come into a new season and it is time for domain turns. If you haven't been here before or you're not sure what domain turns are, basically you take a month out of a season and you do things like Brindis can spend some time leveling up a province, you can spend it all with proficiency, you can build a source, you can make ley lines, you can level up your holding, you can get a holding, etc. There's lots of options, you can declare war, fun stuff like that. So there's a trade complication on this domain turn, but for once it turns out in our favor, and so for this domain turn, Brindis actually gets to collect a little bit more taxes, which is great because as I mentioned in the last session, we're a poor country. We're not a poor country, we just have a really big military that costs lots of money to keep up. So if we didn't have the military, it wouldn't be so bad, but also we need the military because Orogs and white witches and other various things. She also builds a road between Viborg and Burvaz and slowly she's connecting all the provinces and as much of the big cities as she can within our giant country. So that's nice because it'll make trade a lot easier, it'll help former Ryuvik grow a little bit faster and all that stuff. And lastly, she decides to try to level up Namburg, which is where Freemensky is, which is where that dungeon we just dealt with is. And success this time, so that is now a level 3 province, which is super awesome because then you can get your holdings up higher and all that fun stuff. Also, you get more taxes. Roz takes this time to finally build an arcane lab in the warehouse where the Smarty Pants gang lives, so that's nice because now she can do more building and creating different spells and all that stuff. She also uses a bunch of her regency to level her blood score up to 27. And I believe at 29 you get another power, which is awesome because in all fairness, the powers that she have like long life, so she's like 100 and something and looks 23, and detect plant life, it, they're, they're not <laughs> useful on a daily basis, other than being like super wise because she's actually super old. And then uh, lastly, she tries to find some sort of magical item that will increase her intelligence because she's capped out at 20 right now, which is the plus 5. It would be great to get that up a little bit higher because spell saves and all that stuff. No luck. Well, yeah, no luck. Nothing at all. Sten then helps out and helps her find some potions and stuff, but they're all super expensive, so whatever, it's fine. We don't need this. And then Val starts to build a cog. So if you're not aware, Val has a shipyard a couple of provinces over from where the capital is, and she is working on building a boat. She wants to just sail away onto the open ocean, but she needs a boat for that first, so she starts to invest in building that boat. She then tries to level her shipyard up to a level 3, and there's a complication, so it doesn't work. Can you guess where we're going next? <laughs> Probably to that shipyard to figure out what's going on, because this, this always happens. It's like, all right, didn't level up the thing, let's go try to figure out why we didn't level up the thing. And with that, that was the end of that session. It maybe was a little bit shorter, but there was a lot of grinding through that dungeon and then a lot of long rests and domain turns and all that stuff. If you enjoyed this, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe so you'll know when the next one comes out. And with that, I'll see you next time.